Hello, this is Lino Tadros from Falafel Software. I'm very excited to be presenting to you the second video on Monodroid. And this time we'll be using outside resources to represent our user interface for the application instead of loading them straight from uh, code dynamically. So, um, right, uh, let's go ahead and start right away. We'll say File, New Project in Visual Studio 2010. You will notice there is the Monodroid uh, application in here. And if you're not familiar with this part, please take a look at the first video available. We'll go ahead and give it a name in here. We'll call it something like Monodroid 102. The first video was 101. We'll say OK there. Automatically in the Solution Explorer, you will have all the files you need. If you're not familiar with the structure or what activity or r.cs is, please take a look at the first video as well. The idea here is if I open up the activity.cs, you will notice that the code that got generated automatically in the pre-release of Monodroid just creates a button dynamically and it just shows it inside of our first view, which is the set content view, we'll, we'll set it to this button. I actually don't want to create this dynamically in here, so I'm going to delete this code. I don't need the count as well. And there is no more button. What I'm interested in here, folks, is that to be able to load my entire user interface from resources, so you will have to be familiar how to write XML, good XML code, to represent your user interface in a specific layout. If you're familiar with Eclipse, for instance, and you've done this in Java before, you know that you can write these XML files and bring them into the resource directory, for instance, in here. There is a, like, uh, maybe four or five other utilities. Some of them are free, available for you uh, on the web to download. The one I use a lot, if you go to, um, to code.google.com, there is a utility called DroidDraw. You can download it for Linux, Windows, or Mac. And it's a pretty nifty little utility that will um, allow you to create all the user interface uh, in a designer, and it will generate the XML file for you. And the good news for us, for Monodroid, you can use the same exact XML that gets generated from this utility to use in Visual Studio as well. So let's go ahead and open up this uh, droiddraw.exe that I just downloaded. And once this application starts, notes in here, it gives you the root layout, and you can choose whether you want an absolute layout, you can choose li linear, relative, scroll view, or table view. You can experiment with all of those. Just remember, um, you have to always think about uh, your application when you're going to sell it or give it away for free, how many devices and what are the different shapes of devices. So if you do an absolute layout, be careful because it might not look very good on other devices. So if you do relative, might be a better idea. Table layout can be very useful. So uh, there is so many blogs and so many articles and white papers available on the web to explain the, what you get out of each and every one of them and what's the best way to, to build your application based on that. For this uh, simple demo here, I'm going to leave it as a default for absolute layout. Screen size you can choose from landscape or portrait based on whichever resolution you'd like to show this under. On the right side of the screen in here, you have all the different widgets or controls available in the Android SDK, so you can drag them. Remember, I'm in absolute layout, so if I drop a button in here, it will stay exactly where I do, uh, position it on the screen. Same thing with the editor box. If I drop it in here, there it is. I can bring the clock, for instance, and put it right there. You can drag and drop each and every one of these things and do whatever you want with it. Notice also with every single widget or control on the surface for the droid itself, I'm going to click on this control, go to properties, and you notice that all the properties for the specific widget, I can actually change it right inside of here. One of the most important property, of course, since for each and every one of these widgets will be the ID. And notice that the add sign plus ID, these are very important for the XML that's going to be generated so that you can access these as IDs, um, resource IDs for this specific control from the code if you need to interact with this control in code, for instance. Notice that the Droid Draw automatically created a name called Widget 29. That's not a very good name. Hopefully, you will be able to give your controls a very unique name that you, will make sense to you when you write the code. I'm not going to bother with that for this demo, so we'll leave it as a Widget 29 for right now. Okay? With notice that it automatically goes to wrap content, same as the height. I can change that stuff. I can actually make it uh, like 200 pixels, for instance. And when I click on Apply, then, as you can see, the control will take 200 pixels on the screen, for instance. I can change the background color, the padding, the visibility, even the text in here to start with. I can come and say Lino, for instance. I'll say Apply, and there it goes. Let's do the same thing for the button in here. I will leave it as widget 28. That's fine. Uh, let's just go ahead and change the text on this guy. We'll say Click Me. 
say apply and there is click me so that is the user interface for my application um, I'm not a very good designer so hopefully we have very good people in our company that do the design I just the guy that tries to code behind this stuff but uh, designer is not my thing <laughs> we'll click on generate and notice when you click on generate here in droid droid generates all the XML that you can use you can take this XML take it to the Eclipse uh, IDE, you can take it to Visual Studio for the Monodroid or any other utility that will require this XML layout um, to explain how you position everything on the screen and which control you've used. I'm going to actually put this in the clipboard by doing Control A, Control C. And I'm done right now with the Droid Draw, as a matter of fact. Let's go back to Visual Studio. And the trick here is under resources that got generated for us, and I'm not sure if actually by the time the product ships for Monodroid, if this will be created automatically or we'll have to do it. It's not a big deal anyway. I'm going to right-click on resources in here, and we'll add a new folder called it Layout. It's expecting this layout directory for this. And underneath this layout, I want to create an XML file that contains the, the code I just got from Droid Draw. And that can be any name of an XML file. It doesn't have to be any specific name or anything like that. The trick, though, with the current pre-release, when you say new item, I am trying to find an XML file. You will notice that under every single template, there will be nothing that has anything to do with, uh, with XML. And if you're trying to, to be tricky and uh, open one of these and change this extension from CS to XML, that really doesn't work. It will still create it as a CS, as a C-sharp file. One trick I found, if you go to the search install templates in here, if you put the word XML and push enter, it actually does find the XML file in here, and I would be able to actually create one. Let's call it, for instance, the main screen here. We'll call it main.xml. We'll say add. And let's add the main XML for us. I will delete this line from my XML, and let's go ahead and paste all the code we got from Droid Draw. And there we go. That is all the code we got from Droid Draw. What is the only thing left for, uh, for the uh, template inside of Visual Studio to really understand what's going on with the main.xml so that our resource.cs file can create a class that wraps everything inside of our main.xml file? The thing that I need to do is to click on the main.xml. Again, folks, this is probably a very important step I want you to remember. Go to the build action on the main.xml, and this guy has to be an Android resource. If you forget to do this step, the r.cs will not get generated for you. So once the main.xml is caused to be a build action Android resource, now I can actually compile this application. Let's go ahead and say uh, build. And once it builds it, the r.cs will get generated. Ah, sorry, forgot to actually change the code. So I left it empty in here. So what do I need to pass in the set content view so I can load from this main.xml? Well. I need to actually load something, hopefully, from the r.cs. Let's open up r.cs. As you can see, it got generated for me. The class for the r for resources. That is my layout. It did find my main, so that's good news. And also, all the IDs for all the widgets, the clock, the button, and the edit text, all of them are in here. Remember, widget 28 and widget 29, that's our button and our text control, so that's important to remember. Bad names, I know. <laughs> Let's go back to our code in here, and now I'm going to say r. Dot. Hopefully, it will see layout, and it does. That's because the R.CS now is visible. And hopefully, it will see our main. If I put a dot in here, there is our main right there. So now that code is actually going to compile now. So let's go ahead and compile this. And these two lines, just by calling the base and set the content view, will load our entire screen from main.xml, and that will be the starting point of our application based on the layout we created. So that's succeeded. Let's do a control F5 so we can actually start running our simulator. And in the simulator in here, I have like four or five of them. I'm going to run it in my droid. It's one of the uh, simulators I created inside of my AVD. Again, you can see the previous uh, video for that. And the simulator is starting right now. Try not to deploy while the operating system is being loaded in the simulator, uh, especially in this pre-release in here. Um, you want to wait till the operating system is loaded and then deploy the application. So we'll wait for it to do that. So don't click on OK here until the operating system finishes. And it usually takes a few, maybe 30 seconds, to be honest with you, for the entire OS to initialize itself inside of the simulator. I wouldn't recommend for you every time you want to make a change to the code to come and, and shut down the simulator. You don't want to do that. You actually can continue coming back 
um, and making modification and deploying again while the simulator is running. That's totally okay. So now that the operating system is up, I can click on OK now and notice it will sign the APK file and it will try to make sure that the mono runtime is available on the device and then it will actually remove um, any previous uh, presence of this application from the device and then will install the latest and greatest from Visual Studio straight to the simulator. So it will go through all these different steps one by one. Again, it will take probably another 15 seconds to do that. And once it's done, you will notice that the, uh, the application will load in a few seconds inside of the application uh, in the simulator itself. So there is a copying of the device now. And hopefully by the time this finishes, you will notice the application starting in here. And I should be able to see my edit control, my button, and my clock showing up on the screen. Give it another second to load that. Again, the, uh, the pre-release is not optimized um, by any chance right now. By the time this product will be released, all the stuff will be optimized. It will work very fast. As you can see here, Click Me is working. Of course, I don't have any code on the Click Me yet. We'll do that in a second. And there is my clock. And again, I can actually start typing in here. As you can see, the keyboard comes up automatically because the edit text control or widget in the Android SDK has that built in. And it's all working fine. All right, great. Let's now go ahead and make some changes to the code. So what I want to do is that after I set my content layout, I'll show you, for instance, how to write some code uh, for the click of the button, for instance. So we'll go to uh, main.xml. I want you to remember that my button is widget 28, OK? So if I know that this is widget 28, I'm going to go to my class for the activity, and we'll create an Android button. We'll say button, we'll call it my uh, button. There you go. That's good enough. We'll also create one for the, uh, for the edit text. We'll say edit text. I know we'll need one. We'll say my edit. All right, good enough. So these are two private members actually for the class activity I'm going to create. Let's go now to our on create uh, right after the set content view. It's very important that this happens after you set the content view, OK? We're going to say my uh, button. And I am going to say equals. And I'm going to typecast here a function that you will hopefully get very familiar with, which is called find view by ID. It's a very important function because you have to find all your widgets inside of the res these resources by this find view by ID. So we'll say find view by ID. And guess what we're going to pass? It takes an integer ID in here. So inside of this function, we just have to say r dot, hopefully that will be an ID inside of our resource.cs file, dot, and all my widgets, as you can see, will be right here. And that is number 28, which is my button. So I think we're in good shape right now. Now, this variable will have a reference to my widget 28, which is the button inside of that resource. Once I do that, I can actually use Visual Studio's capability of creating a delegate to do the click event on my button. So I can say my button dot click. And the nice thing about Visual Studio, I can say plus equal. And if I push tab twice, look, once it adds the handler, twice it adds even the, uh, the click event itself code. So I don't have to remember any of the stuff. It will do it for you. So first click will add the event handler. The second click will implement the event handler itself. So whatever you're going to put in here is what's going to get triggered whenever somebody clicks on that button in the user interface. So what do you think we will do inside of this click in here? Remember, we created the my text, the uh, my edit for the edit text box in here. So let's go ahead and change the text in the edit box based on the click. We'll, we'll do the same thing like we did with this, but with this uh, line in here. And I remember the edit box was widget 29. So let's go ahead and uh, steal some code. Instead of my button, this will be my edit. And this will be the class of edit text from the Android SDK. There you go. And find by ID, and this time it will be 29, not 28. All right. With this one line of code, we already have a reference to the edit control in the resource. Now I can say my edit.text equals Hello, Monodroid. OK, and that's it. Let's go ahead and compile this guy one more time. We'll rebuild the solution. And notice that actually my simulator is still running. So when I actually uh, 
I'm going to send this one. It will not have to wait for everything um, to start from the beginning, so it will go a lot faster, hopefully, this time. So I'm compiling right now. Control F5. Notice that the emulator is already running. I'm going to say OK. And notice what happens, actually, in the application itself. Um, I want to bring up the emulator here to show you that uh, it will not install the mono runtime because it will be already on the machine, so you're just uh, expecting it to be there. And it will remove this application that is running right now, okay, because it found out that the same APK needs to be uploaded, so it will remove it and it will install the new one. There you go, it says removing previous application, and now it's deploying the new application to the simulator. It hopefully will take another couple of seconds, and when it gets back, uh, you will see the application loading. The main .xml is being loaded, and hopefully everything is hooked up correctly in the activity, so that when I click on the button, we will see Hello Monodroid showing up in the edit control. There you go, and if we clicked on this guy, and it says Hello Monodroid, we've done something right. All right, folks, hopefully that was useful to you to see, and it's pretty simple to write applications now using C Sharp for Monodroid, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and see you soon with another video for Monodroid.